So let's get started with some of the simpler stuff. I know this is on the test. This is creating levels. So let's jump into Revit. Let's just start a brand new model from scratch. So under projects, let's go new. Let's use our structural template. Let's click OK. Now, if we're going to create levels, we need to be in an elevation to do it. A level is a physical item that has a datum elevation to it that will correspond to a level in our project browser. So what I'd like to do is I want to go to my south elevation. I'm going to zoom in on south. I'm going to double click on this little hat right here. And the default is to have two levels. What I'd like to do is select level two. Notice that a bunch of items turn blue. We get a 3D icon. We get a little check mark to turn the bubble on or off. And we get a lock padlock. What I'd like to do is select level two. And instead of 10 feet, click onto where it says 10 feet. I want to make this 12 feet and then hit enter. Notice that the entire level will shift up. As you can see, there's a padlock and a little aligning line. If I click on the grip on level two, both levels will lock and align along with each other. Also, every other view will be reflected by this movement. So for example, if I go back to my floor plan by hitting control tab, and I zoom out and I go to my north elevation, we'll see that our levels are appended to one another. But if I uncheck 3D, that means any movement that I do here is only going to be in this view where it says 2D. So now if I move level two in, and I hit control tab, and I go back to my south elevation, we'll see that that change hasn't been made. So for levels, if you only want it to show up in this view when you move it, uncheck 3D. Now to create a new level, what I'm going to do is I'm going to either select a level, right click, and create similar. Or if I hit escape a few times, if I go to my structure tab and I go to my datum panel and I click on my level button, I can make a level there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on level. Now in conjunction with the level command, I have my temporary draw palette. I'm going to click on my pick lines button. And for my offset, I'm going to go 12 feet. Now I'm going to hover over level two and I'm going to offset that up 12 feet. I have level three, I can keep going, four, five, six, however many levels I want. But you have to make sure that you hit escape a few times. Now, one more thing I want to do is create another level, below level one. So I'm going to select level one. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to create similar. On my draw panel, I'm going to pick lines. This time I'm going to offset six feet. But also notice over here where it says make plan view. Notice in the project browser that I've made now six plan views. If I click on plan view types, we'll see that it's going to make a ceiling plan, a floor plan, and a structural plan. Generally, we don't want a ceiling plan and a structural model or a floor plan. So we can just make structural plans. I'm going to click OK. Now on my draw panel, pick lines, offset six feet. I'm going to offset a level down six feet. I'm going to hit escape a couple times. Notice that now that it's below zero, it's going to give us a negative increment. I'm going to click on level seven, click it again. In all caps, I'm going to call it T period O period space footing. I'm going to hit enter. Now what happens if I rename a level, Revit wants to know if we want to rename the corresponding views along with it. And yes, we usually do want to do that. So click yes. Now I'm going to hit escape. Let's do the same for the top level. Let's call this level six. Let's call it roof. Hit enter. Yes, we want to rename the corresponding views. Now I'm going to make one more level, but it's only going to be a foot above this. So I'm going to select roof, right click. I'm going to create similar. On my draw panel, I'm going to use my pick lines button. I'm going to offset this just one foot. I'm going to put it right there. I want to make sure that it's right in the way and annoying. For level eight, I'm going to select level eight and I'm going to call it curbing. I'm going to hit enter. Yes. Now the reason I did that is because levels have other qualities to them. So if we hit escape and then select curbing, I can click on our little break or add elbow icon and break that. So now if I move it up, now I can move this grip over and I can move this grip over. So now this is out of the way and I can move this up, 
Perfect. Now if I select this level, I can zoom out and go to the other side of it. Notice that we have the same choice down here, so I can turn on the bubble on this side as well. So if I select this level, I can turn on my bubble. Perfect. Now I'm going to select level 5. I'm going to click Edit Type. Our constraints are set to, it's going to show our project base point for our elevation base. Our symbol, it says level head circle. If I hit the drop down here, we can change the actual value of that. This is an external family that we load into our project. So if I was to say level head no bubble, hit apply, hit OK, there's no bubble. I don't really like that, so I'm going to select it. I'm going to click edit type. I'm going to select level head circle. But if you want, you can have a symbol at both ends by default. So click symbol at end one default, click it on. And even for the color, if we want the color, if I click black, we can make it green. I don't recommend it. Line pattern, grid line one quarter, we can make it hidden. Click apply, click OK, hit escape. So there's a lot of stuff that we can do with levels. But remember now, if we want to go to a level, notice that it's blue. If I double click on level one, this will bring us to level one in our project. If I go back to my levels, if I double click on level four, this will bring us down to our level four view. So that's how you create levels.